In this video, four ways to reasonably secure your bike without carrying a big hefty lock. Of course, no bike security method is foolproof. There are loads of videos here on YouTube showing just how easily different locks can be broken. Locks are graded to different standards, but the best locks I've found are motorbike locks. However, these are really heavy. I only used this sort of lock when I was commuting and the bike would stand around all day. So most cyclists out for a ride don't bother with a lock. They just try not to let their bike out of view at cafe stops or when they're nipping in to buy some food. But of course, that is not always possible. And yet there are some simple, inexpensive things you can do to help protect your bike, at least from the opportunist thief. Frame marking, accompanied with a bike registration, can be done cheaply at home. And the most recognized system in the UK is Bike Register. It's supported by all the UK's police forces. It's free to register your bike, and you could stop there. If police recovered your stolen bike, you've significantly increased your chances of getting it back. Incidentally, this website suggests frame numbers are not unique, which was news to me. How the site makes money is by selling add-ons. I've put their tamper-proof stickers on a couple of my bikes with the unique number of the online registration. If someone points a smartphone at it like this, it goes straight to that registration and you can see if it's stolen. There's no details about the owner. You have to use this option if you have a bare carbon or bare titanium bike like this with no lacquer cover. That's because the next level is to etch the registration number into the bike frame lacquer using a stencil. You can't see it very well on my black frame, but it shows under UV light. The etching is much clearer on Liz's aluminium Camino. And there are more options on the website. At a coffee or shop stop, you can just remove the through axles or quick releases from one or both wheels. It takes just seconds and take them in with you. Then if anybody tries to lift and make off with your bike, the wheels fall out. Just remember to put them back in when you get out of the shop and you plan to ride because riding without those could be nasty. The hip lock is a metal reinforced zip tie that needs a special tool to open it. It's not really a lock because I'm pretty sure anyone who has one of these tools can open any other, but it weighs only a few grams and is another deterrent. An anti-theft alarm for your bike is a good idea and there are a few models to choose. I've just been sent this light with a built-in movement alarm. Link it to a phone app and if it is moved when you're in a coffee stop, this happens. Now I've not tested the click yet and some online reviews are critical so I shall reserve judgment. Remember, none of this beats a bike lock and this website rates and reviews them. This video is just for the weekend riders at quick coffee stops, when of course the best option is to do all of this. Use the Z-Lock, make sure your bike is security marked and pull the through axles and the quick releases. None of that will stop a really determined thief, but then again, neither will many locks. The whole idea is just to stop the casual opportunist and perhaps they will just move on to another bike. This video was part of a series for new riders called Stuff Cyclists Don't Tell You. So if you've enjoyed it, take a look at the playlist with the purple borders and give us a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye.